Okay, I'm making a little video talk on co coordinate systems. And I googled this image of Orion and Gemini because I think it's going to be fairly uh, useful to look at a couple of locations in the sky. One of these is the summer solstice. Let's have a look also at this diagram here where you can see see a little bit more plainly what I'm talking about um, with the uh, lined up with the equator of the Earth is um, is Orion over here in the summer, and above it, lined up with the sun, it would be behind the sun in June. So it's Gemini. Now Wolfram Alpha has a pretty handy uh, coordinate lookup. Let me see how this works. If I type in 0 H, 0 hours right ascension and 23.5 degrees whoops, uh, declination, what will happen? It looks up. Well, that's embarrassing. Yesterday it showed me a star map. It Okay, it wanted me to spell the word right ascension, zero hours, declination 23.5. And now it gives me an image of something in Pegasus. So I've used the wrong um, right ascension. It should be six hours, right ascension. And you can see Mr. Uh, Orion down here. There's Beetlejuice. And you can see that... Um, it's above Betelgeuse, about a few degrees above Betelgeuse, and it's in the constellation Taurus, which is strange because I was really expecting it to be in Gemini. So here's a picture of Orion and Gemini and Taurus all in the same picture. Picking that out of this picture, I think you get this pentagon here. And it looks like it comes down from this corner to get that, and then down there. And then you got this group of stars, including Aldebaran, Aldebaran. And maybe it includes this star over here. I don't know. So, kind of looks like this includes an arm over here that's reaching for this, what might be this star here. And then, and then the ecliptic runs from Delta Gemini to whatever this this the first star in the tail in Taurus. So if I was to draw that, that would come from here and run down straight that way. That would be the ecliptic. And now let's see if we can identify exactly where the summer, solst summer solstice is in that. This has it almost right between Orion's fingers, just above it. So I'll just mark that right about there. That's the summer solstice. Now, Ryan's fingers aren't drawn in this picture over here, so we'd have to draw it somewhere a little above where, a little above the aim of those two. So, actually, probably right on that, they've got the ecliptic drawn in here, so this is probably the zero point of the ecliptic. Now, in this diagram, the, uh, the zero, zero point, this is the zero, zero, this is actually 90 degrees, let's call it 6 hours, 90 degrees in, um, in equatorial coordinates. And down here, um, just, I think it was lined up so that it looks like Orion is leaning on it. Let me uh, go check by typing into here zero hours and declination uh, nope I still want six hours 
six hours, right ascension, declination zero, and see what it comes up with. Yeah, this is this is where the um this is the six zero point of the uh of the equatorial coordinates. Aha. So you see my error. Um this was not the 90 degree point, but the 23.5 degree point. And this here is the 60 point. And I'll call it the 6, six hour 0 degree point. And you'll see there's a 23.5 degree angle between this point and this point. So in any case, if I draw a line basically right along here, that is going to be the equator. Now these lines are, for all intents and purposes, parallel. But, but if you point your finger towards Orion and then move it uh, standing in one place uh, and move it to the right, what your hand, what your finger will actually do is rotate. So. As you rotate, these two lines um, will these two lines will actually intersect by the time you have turned your body 90 degrees, following those in a straight line. Let's start by following them to the left. On second thought, let's make it to the right. Um, I want to draw the line from Orion's belt towards Pisces, and from that little point up here, let's see, towards where the tail of Taurus and and uh, where what Orion is reaching for there goes towards Pisces. What I'm looking for is this zero hour point. And as it turns out, the zero hour, zero degree point is right here below Pisces. It says down here, that's the constellation Pisces. And so if I drew that on this larger map, it looks like that circular part of Pisces doesn't show up on the map. So these lines won't quite cross on this diagram, but they'll get really close together. The the pair will reach its widest point here and then start coming close coming closer together on the way back. Okay, but now I'm beginning to feel silly and stupid because this says Pisces Australia winter map and this says Pisces. So I missed. Luckily I draw this on layers so I can erase it and let's see if I can get those angles correct now. So I can see this this guy is pointing almost directly at it and those two are pointing dire almost directly at it so I'll put it right about there this will be the that's going to be the zero zero point and then going from here just to the right of Orion I'll draw a straight line towards Pisces and then also from this point between Orion's arm. Uh, it's, it needs to be parallel though. This, this isn't going to look quite right because um, these two lines on this scale, they should not appear straight. Here I've got a picture of the star map on a global, or on basically this is supposed to be a sphere. Now on this, on this, these uh, straight lines appear curved. You can see the points that I was describing. Here is the uh, zero zero point of the of the equatorial coordinate system. Or no, I'm sorry, that's the ninety or the zero. What was it? The six zero six hour zero degree point. Here's the zero hour zero degree point. And um, up here, between 
Orion's fingers, just above Orion's fingers, is the six hour uh, 23.5 degree point, and this is the um, six hour zero degree point, and this is the zero zero degree point, zero hour zero degree point. Now, if you followed these loops around to the other side of the sphere, they would just continue around like that. And this one would continue around like that. And they would have another meeting point over here on the other side, which would be at 12 hours, uh, 12 hours, 0 degrees. Let's see where that would be. It looks like today that's about where the moon is. The location is somewhere in Virgo, so let's look at Virgo. As it happens, there's another image of it on the same website that I was looking at earlier. So right here in Virgo is the uh, 12 hour zero degree point. And while I'm here, let's go ahead and look at the 18 hour and minus 23.5 degree point, which is the winter solstice, which puts us in the constellation Sagittarius. And those look a little bit different on these two maps. Let's see. I can see Sagittarius down there in the corner. But to get to my bearings, I'm going to have to look at Ophiuchus and Sagittarius together. OK, at first looking at this picture, I thought I saw a mistake, but I, I realized that because the ecliptic and the and the celestial equator or the uh, equatorial plane of the earth should be parallel at the winter solstice but this is not the uh, the earth's equator this is the galactic equator and the center of the galaxy lies in the direction in this direction near the teapot so the article says that two things set Sagittarius apart from all constellations. First, Sagittarius marks the direction to the galactic center. And second, the sun shines in front of Sagittarius on the December solstice. Modern stargazers have had a hard time seeing Sagittarius as the centaur sporting a bow and arrow. But the teapot, a famous star pattern lighting up the western half of Sagittarius, is fairly easy to make out. A teapot is called an asterism. A star formation that is not recognized as a constellation is an asterism. Here's a picture of the teapot with the galactic center behind it. So if I had to convert between these two diagrams, I would say this part is the same as this. And then this line connects there to there. Oops, Let's see if I can draw that straighter. And then we would go there, there, there. I guess that star is brighter for some reason. Um, that star shows up really well right here. Um, but it's not actually connected to uh, Sagittarius. And then we have this, this, and this makes that form there and then the uh, actual center it's almost precisely at the, lo the location of that um, cluster right there so this version over here is missing one of the stars let's put that star in there and this star over here and then we'll have something that looks something like that and we'll have the teapot there and what does that say? I cannot read it. According to this, it is M8, the Lagoon Nebula. If I look up M8 on Wolfram Alpha, I find the Lagoon Nebula. And its right ascension is almost exactly 18 hours, 18 hours, 3 minutes. And its declination is almost, is really close to 23.5 degrees. So M8 is a nice marker for the position of the winter solstice. So I'll put a little, nope, not here. 
So I can put a little marker there for, um, this is 18 hours, negative 23.5 degrees in the equatorial coordinates. Now let's look for the 18 hour point on the uh, equatorial circle. That is located in Ophiuchus. I can see this matching triangle here. Um, of this. It's not exactly a triangle, but those two things in Ophiuchus, which puts, which puts the, uh, the center point right here, right around here. So that point will be the 18 hour and zero degree declination point. I'm going I'm going to allow myself a little bit of confusion here because this star map or these two star maps that we've drawn, this one and this one, with all these coordinates on it, seem to be drawn correctly. So I mean drawn correctly in the sense that everything is uh in the same direction. For instance, Ophiuchus here has the same shape, same general shape as this. It's not inverted or anything like that. But the trick is that um, we are looking at the globe from the outside, uh, but we would be looking at the stars from the inside of the globe. So I think that if these globes were drawn so that they would be the, so that they were accurate for somebody inside the globe, you would want these dotted lines to be represented as your um, as your ecliptic and the equator. So would that be um, a flip vertical, or would it be accomplishable through a rotate 180 degrees? the flip vertical will uh, invert everything. Let's see, so I'll flip vertical again and then rotate 180 degrees and so the rotate 180 degrees would make it like that. If I imagine looking at the inside of the sphere so that, wait that's the wrong color so that this part of the circle and this part of this circle are not represented but would come out on this side. But it occurs to me if I rotated 180 degrees, what happened? Ah, oh, there it is. Um, I could also imagine that part being on the inside and this part coming, coming out and that part being inside and this part coming out. Uh, for some reason that's harder for me to visualize though. But I don't think, but I think maybe there's nothing about this two-dimensional image that prevents this from being the inside of a sphere. Except for, uh, wait, a, a natural tendency to treat that as a as a line that's parallel to the floor. If it's the inside of a sphere, then this would be the line that was parallel to the floor. And this could just be, this and this could just be markings on the inside of the sphere. Or for that matter, this could be the line that is parallel to the floor. Or if I leaned it leaned this section toward me, then this could be the line to, that was parallel to the floor. You can just make any uh, hemisphere or any great circle parallel to the floor. In any case, I want to start discussing orthogonal coordinate systems and the use in astronomy. What we've been using is an angle phi and an angle theta, which I'll call um, actually, uh, this is, we'll call this the polar angle 
and this is the azimuthal angle. And um, zero, zero is the vernal equinox. On the polar, or on the summer solstice, this polar angle goes up to um, six hours or 90 degrees and the azimuthal angle goes to 23.5 degrees. This is where the Sun is um, in equatorial coordinates on the first day of summer. It's also in the hand of Orion. Vernal equinox was in the tail of Pisces. Now the the autumn equinox I never actually looked for, but it's somewhere in Virgo. I don't think I looked for it in this video. And the uh, winter, the winter solstice was somewhere in was actually the M8 the M8 Messier object cluster which was near teapot and galactic center now these angles can be converted back and forth to something called an orthogonal coordinate system these these are kind of a let's call this a spherical coordinate system where you're given the coordinate mapping onto a unit sphere let's even call it the un a unit spherical system because kind of implied in this is a radius equals technically it's infinity um, or uh, but we could also just use one thinking of things actually mapped onto mapped onto a sphere like this is implied here um, but it's a it's a one that's a really long way away one. Now in the orthogonal coordinate system though we've got an X, Y, and a Z that are all perpendicular to each other and that's what orthogonal means it's perpendicular X, Y, and Z and the the uh, direction of these is kind of important um, this is called a right-handed system and if I did it this way so that X went this way and Y went this way and Z went that way it would be left-handed and uh, the, the idea behind a right-handed system is that when you point in the X direction and then bend your fingers towards the Y direction and your thumb your thumb will point towards the Z direction or if you point your arm in the X direction and your palm in the Y direction then your thumb will point in the Z direction. If you did the same thing with your left hand point your arm in the X direction your palm in the Y direction then your thumb would point in the Z direction. But we're going to use a right-handed coordinate system and the way we're going to express these vectors is that we'll have X, Y, and Z equal 1, 0, 0 for the vernal equinox. It will equal 0, 1, 0 for the summer solstice. And what's not up here is one last guy, the North Pole. And I'm going to call this the ecliptic North Pole is going to be it's also going to be 18 hours but it's going to be um, 90 minus 23.5 which is 66.5 degrees declination it's basically tilted from the uh, zero degree point or from the 90 degree point by 23.5 degrees um, that could also be expressed as six hours and uh, 
negative 66.5 degrees if you wanted to do it that way. Either way, that is going to be your 0, 0, 1. So that'll be your z component is. Now I was describing the x, y, and z coordinates in the ecliptic coordinates of these. On the other hand, to find the x, y, z in the um, in the equatorial equatorial coordinates, you will need to take z is the sine of theta. It's the sine of the azimuthal angle. If theta is down here along the equatorial plane, sine of theta is 0. Sine of 0 equals 0. Whereas if it's straight up to the north star, then um, sine of 90 is positive 1. And if it's straight down to the south, then sine of negative 90 is negative 1. Now, the uh, other two things are both going to have a cosine theta term in them. Because um, if I'm up here or down here, depending on where I am on the circle, the the disks get smaller and smaller as I get towards when sine 90 is 1, I can't have any x or y term, but when sine 90 is 0, the x and y term are going to fill out a full circle. Now viewing from above, I'm going to be looking at the x direction right here, which is towards the vernal equinox. Let's just say it's Pisces and the y direction over here which is towards towards Orion and uh, the angle in here is phi and so x will be the cosine of phi and y will be the sine of phi with this triangle here Oops. so this is cosine phi this is sine of phi. So this is going to be sine of phi right here. So this transforms the uh, unit spherical coordinate system to the equator or to the uh, orthogonal to an orthogonal coordinate system. Furthermore, you can convert back from the orthogonal system to a equatorial to a um, spherical coordinate system by coming back the other way. Z or theta is just the arc sine of Z. Z is going to be a number between zero and one, so you don't have to do any special things to make it work. Um, then phi is going to be if x is greater than 0, it's going to be arc tangent of y over x. Else, it's going to be arc tangent of y over x plus 180 degrees. So if you want to see that, imagine I have a line coming through right here, and this could this is y. The y over x from this is one. The y over x from this is negative one over negative one is also one. So if x is over here. If x is on the positive side, then we'll have a 45 degree angle. But if x is on the negative side, we would have a 225 degree angle. So tangent could give us, will give us 45 degrees in either case. 
and the key element separating the two is whether or not x is greater than zero or not. Now let's say we're given the task to create, to find a method to convert ecliptic coordinates to equatorial coordinates. Then I'm going to want the 100 zero, zero to map to 100. Zero, zero. I'm going to want the 010 zero, zero to map to to phi equals 90 degrees and theta equals 23.5 degrees. Remember this is the the summer solstice. And I want the 010 zero, to map to phi equals 270 degrees and theta equals 66.5 degrees. That's the ecliptic north pole, which means it's the if you're looking down from the North Pole, you will see all of the planets orbiting the Sun counterclockwise. And most of them will be spinning counterclockwise, too. Now, um, this is already done. This one, um, I need to map it into, equi into orthogonal coordinates which means this is going to be the sine of 23.5 and the x and y will have cosine 23.5 factored in and sine of 90 sine no cosine of 90 sine 90 cosine 90 sine 90 now the cosine of 23.5 is 0.917, so 0.917, and the sine of 23.5 is 0.39, let's call it 0.399, around it, and cosine of 90 is 0, and the sine of 90 is 1, so this is equal to 0, 0.917, and 0.3, I don't want to round it, let's call it 0.3987, I mean, I do want to round it, but not to 3. Well, let's make it 4. Um, or if you prefer, you could just cancel this out, leave the numbers in, or leave all the calculations in there. So sine of 90 is 1, so I can cancel out that and just have 0, cosine 23.5, sine 23.5. Now, similarly, with uh, the second matrix, uh, or the second vector, we're going to take cosine 66.5 and sine 66.5 and sine 270 to get um, this will be cosine of 270 is 0 but sine 270 is negative 1 so it'll be negative uh, 0.3987 and the sine 66.5 will be 0 0.917 I guess if I'm rounding to four significant digits, that should actually be 0.9171. So here's something you can do with this. If I'm mapping 100 to, uh, to 100, and I'm mapping 010 to, to 0 0.9171 and 0.3987, and I'm mapping 001 to 0, negative 0.3987 and 0 0.9171. This is actually a transformation matrix. And given the orthogonal coordinates of any uh, constellation or point in space, I can actually apply this in ecliptic, ecliptic coordinates. I can apply this matrix. I can apply this matrix, which is actually cosine 23.5, negative sine 23.5, sine 23.5, and cosine 23.5. And I can find out what the uh, the orthogonal equatorial coordinates are. And if I take the inverse of this matrix, which is just rotating back, cosine negative 23.5, negative sine negative 23.5 just change all of the angles to negative 
which in fact all it does is it changes this to a plus and this to a minus, you can um, you can transform back from orthogonal equatorial to orthogonal ecliptic. You can in fact do the exact same thing with galactic coordinates. The galactic north, let's use, uh, well, if we're using 1950 coordinates, we use these. If we're using 2000 coordinates, we use these. So the uh, polar angle is 12 hours 51.4 minutes, and the azimuthal angle is 27.13 degrees. Now the galactic pole is essentially the same as the vernal equinox in our uh, other two systems. So we'll have V equals, what am I saying? That's not the galactic pole, this is a galactic center. So the galactic center would have, if I use the same 2000 coordinates, we'd have 17 hours, 45.6 minutes and we'll have negative 28.94 degrees. Once we find those, though, we need a 0, 1, 0 vector, which is not really well described, but the, really what we know is we want a right-handed right -handed coordinates, so in a right-handed coordinate system, if you take the cross product of 1, 0, 0 and 0, 1, 0, you will get 0, 0, 1. But also, if you take 0, 0, 1 cross 1, 0, 0, you will get 0, 1, 0. So that's the requirement we need to implement here, that north crossed with center is equal to the 0, 1, 0 vector. So you take this and convert it to orthogonal, and then you take this and convert it to orthogonal, and then once you got those, you can take the cross product of those two, the north by the center, to get the uh, essentially the galactic east direction. And finally, you put those all together in a matrix, and you'll have a transformation matrix that transforms galactic coordinates into equatorial. And all we need to do then is take the inverse of this matrix, and it should be applied to any equatorial set of orthogonal equatorial coordinates to get the orthogonal galactic coordinates. By the way, um, these two matrices were constructed with the 1950 um, coordinates, not the uh, 2000 coordinates. And they have at this point not been confirmed to any significant degree. Let's play with this a little bit. Let's put in some some random right ascension and declination and just convert the coordinates. This is the 1950. It gives us an L of 154 and a B of negative 24.6. Well, so far it appears that this has failed because um, if this had worked, my input should have gone from three hours to, if I had taken it back from galactic to equatorial, um, I should have gotten three hours and 30 degrees. Unfortunately, I got uh, 13.7 hours and 57 degrees, or 17.6 hours and 26.25 degrees. So I've made some error. To confirm that it is actually my mistake, I'm going to try plugging in Wikipedia's data for the galactic center into here, which is 17 hours, 45 minutes, 0. 0.6. I don't want to bother with that, I'll just leave it 1745, and um, negative 28, uh, shoot, in minutes, let's just make it 29, uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1745, 0, 0, 
and convert the coordinates for that. And what do we get? We get, assuming this is degrees and this is degrees, we get something very close to 0, 0. Now let's try uh, what Wikipedia has for the North Pole. Oh, by the way, I used the 2000 coordinates down here. This thing is using the 1950 coordinates, so let's go ahead and use the 1950 coordinates before I go on. 17 hours, 42 minutes, and wait, negative 28.94, so negative 29, 0, 0, 0, 0. That's not a very convenient input format at all, but uh, 1742, 0, 0. And I will convert the coordinates here. Might come out a little bit closer to 0, 0. 359.8, which is close to 0, and 0 0.03. That's all. That's in degrees. That's very, very close to 0. Similarly, with the North Pole, I would put in 12 hours, 49 minutes, 0, 0. And 27.4 degrees would be uh, 20, 27. Uh, 0.4 degrees would be, I don't know, about 20 second, 20 minutes, 0, 0, and convert the coordinates, and this time we get an angle of 89.9 degrees. This angle doesn't really matter, because that close to the pole, this becomes unstable, basically. I believe I may have found my mistake. Um, these matrices that I made yesterday this matrix should be called galactic to equatorial. Let me see what I called it. I called it equatorial to galactic. So I had it reversed right here. After I make that change with my previous example, I find that using these coordinates, 154.01 and negative 24.6, plugging it back into my equation, I end up with 3 hours and 30 degrees, which was what I initially put in. So that means I am satisfied with these matrices as they are written right here. It was just that I had misnamed them inside my Mathematica code.